Uh, just want to make sure that the screen is okay. I'm actually testing out the Twitch iPhone service, I guess, uh, for the first time. So I should be able to see everybody's chat uh, and respond in kind. Let's just make sure that the actual volume is fine, and then we'll get started with the stream in about three minutes, my friends. Let me just turn down the mic for a bit, guys. Uh, we will be back in about three minutes. Okay, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started here about a minute early uh, for the actual stream. And um, <clears throat> we're actually taking a look at quite a fascinating DLC today. So, yes, uh, people are already mentioning Byzantium, and certainly that is a highlight here uh, that we're going to be taking a look at. So, first things first, I think what I want to do is jump right into campaigns. We're going to be actually doing one of the new campaigns right now and you guys will soon see what that campaign is. So let's go ahead and move into the Belisarius campaigns right here. And you guys are also getting your first look at the actual campaigns available for Belisarius here. I can't wait to take a look. I haven't played a bit. I wanted to go ahead and do this like a first look. I absolutely lumped, uh, loved, uh, excuse me, um, Legion's Triumphant, really, really amazing stuff. And in this case, we are playing Belisarius. I have decided to take Legate. I think that's right in the middle. We could go a little bit tougher uh, since every single time we play a campaign, we seem to do pretty well. So should I go up to Governor? I think it's time. So I'm going to try as Governor. If I fail, I do apologize. This campaign follows the career of Flavius Belisarius, the main instrument of the Byzantine Empire's Justinian I's ambitious project of reconquering much of the Mediterranean territory of the former Western Roman Empire, which had been lost in the previous century. A native Latin speaker of Thracian origin, Belisarius rose rapidly in the ranks of the imperial bodyguard. On the ascension of Emperor Justinian in 527 AD, he was appointed commander-in-chief of the army on the east of the Persian frontier. After the Persian War ended in a stalemate and an eternal peace, which lasted less than eight years, Belisarius was sent by Justinian to conquer first the Vandal Kingdom in Africa, then the Ostrogothic Kingdom in Italy. It was left to his colleague and rival Narses to complete the latter conquest, but Belisarius had done very all the groundwork with very limited resources. Before Belisarius and Justinian both died in 565, Africa, Italy, and southern Spain had all been brought back into the imperial fold, a truly outstanding achievement. Uh, I didn't know they both died in 565 together. So let's go ahead and move forward. Now we can do a static campaign, which means the difficulty level remains static throughout the campaign. Or you can, of course, do the progressive campaign, which means that if you win a battle, the next battle is going to be a little bit more t difficult, a little bit more difficult, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so here we go. We're going to jump in. Hi, Pixel. Good to see you. And Nikoforos Fokas, good to see you as well. 
Yeah, exactly. It's tough. It's tough. So we're going to stick to static, especially since we've upped our actual difficulty level here. I think it's time. So let's go into it and see what happens. 430 AD. We have been at war with the Persians since 527 AD, supposedly over the issue of the Persian king of kings, Kavad, forcibly converting the kingdom of Iberia to Zoroastrianism. Three years later, Kavad has sent a vast army into northern Mesopotamia under the overall command of General Peroz. You have been sent to halt their progress and prevent them from capturing the fortress of Dadas. In order to raise a large enough army, you have been forced to mobilize the local garrisons. The armies meet near Dadas. So we're going to be digging ditches to protect our infantry. That's currently the only choice for the start of the campaign. Does that mean we're going to have some sort of trench works here? That would be quite interesting. Ancient trench works have always been fascinating to me. And yeah, they, they're pretty effective, actually. Good to see everybody showing up here to take a look at the Belisarius. I can't wait to take a look myself. So let's see what these units actually uh, look like here. Oh, yeah, baby. We've got some veteran Byzantine lancers, some armored noble lancers. It's already looking really great. And there's a unit here called Byzantine flankers. Let's just take a look at that really quickly. So well-equipped light horse archers. That seems pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and take the Byzantine flankers here. Uh, and what I think I'll do with them is probably try to join them up with the rest of our units. Armored noble lancers as well. Let's do the Legio Comitanensis. Interesting. Now, they actually don't seem to be incredibly good, but they're okay. So they're actually field uh, infantry with a proportion of archers there. Let's take some fierce nomad light horse archers. We know how effective light horse archers can be in general uh, from our previous battles against the Huns. So we're going to try to take some Hunnish tactics here. Is that correct? Hunnish tactics? And look at those veteran Byzantine lancers. They look incredible. It's almost like they're plated in gold, which they very well might be. Now, the interesting thing about the Noble Lancers here is we can eventually dismount them. But something that does surprise me, and again, maybe I just don't know enough about the Byzantine army, uh, is that there is a lot of cavalry here. Not so much in terms of foot units. We've got some irregular foot, etc., but for the most part, this is a cavalry army, from what I can see. Okay. And we got the irregular foot unit as well. Okay. So since uh, this is, I guess, the campaign battle, we didn't actually get to set up our forces here. Uh, it's going to be primarily just waiting for the enemy turn and proceeding. See what we've done here. Byzantine Lancers with bow, says Nikoforos Focus. I am in love, he says. Make sure I didn't press the wrong button here because for some reason we are essentially selecting all of the units. Pixel says solid late Roman stuff, which I, I'm surprised by. I didn't know that the late Roman stuff was necessarily uh, going to be mainly cavalry here. Okay, I think we might have to do a little restart. Hold on one second, guys. Let's head back to the main menu. Uh, for some reason, I selected all units, and we couldn't get out of that. That's a little strange. Keep in mind, this is not out yet. So if we're going to face uh, you know, smaller issues like that, it's pretty typical. I will not be reading the entire uh, start of that. I think you guys pretty much get the idea. But if anybody wants to discuss the politics, the Belisarius, Justinian as well, uh, feel free in the comments. We always love to have some historical discussion going on there. I really want to take the easier difficulty, but I'm, I'm not going to do that. So let me actually go ahead and just auto-deploy at this point. I'll trust the AI to go ahead and select this army for me. Okay. So let's go ahead and autofill And accept. I 
haven't seen this before. So I guess now we have the addition of being able to go ahead and uh, name units before deployment. I don't know if this is new. I honestly haven't seen this before. That's pretty cool. So we can go ahead and rename these units. If you guys want your names in the game, we can certainly do that. Just let me know what kind of unit you want and we will make it happen. We're also gonna get a close up here, a very quick close up on these units. Cause I wanna take a look at what these Byzantine units look like and just look at this. I mean, wow, especially the, um, the Byzantine Lancers, they look just amazing. I mean, just, I, I can't imagine how in this era, um, how much that would cost to have armor like that. We've also got the Limitane Spearmen here. And yeah, I am surprised by the lack of infantry but again, uh, from what we, from what I'm seeing in the chat here, it seems that this was quite common for a late Byzantine ar army, and uh, that you know this would be quite normal. I love the fact we have some horse archers, but I think since we have this trench here, I don't think it's right to move forward. I'm gonna just not do anything. I'm, I'm literally just gonna stay here for now. Uh, if they don't move forward, then I will proceed and start moving forward. But in the meantime, don't really think it's necessary. Uh, let's take a look here. Agrippa's Grippers says Pixel. I like that one. Actually, that is my um, my sort of nickname whenever I'm playing an FPS. So we'll put Grippa's Grippers. How about that? And I think if, if I'm going to do that, um, yeah, we're going to give it to probably one of our Lancers. So maybe that's only something you can do at the beginning. Interesting. Okay, let's see. Tools. Interesting. So at the beginning of the battle now, you, you can sort of rename your units, which of course, if you know a little bit about the modding uh, going into the, the folder, you can certainly change the names of certain units quite, quite easily. Uh, but to add that as a main feature, I, I like that. I think that'll certainly appeal to certain people. I'm not going to move everybody up. I'm just kind of trying to make a funnel shape here. And I'm hoping the enemy will kind of fall into it. I think you guys can see the shape I'm going for. Basically just try to funnel the enemy in here, but it doesn't look like they're going to be proceeding forward. So we might need to be the bigger men in this case. I should have just done that with the whole unit. There we go. All right, let's end the turn. Actually, let me move forward with Belisarius. Come on, enemies. Doesn't look like they're going to take the bait, quite frankly. Uh, I think they're just going to stay put. And let's take a look at these Persians. This is, of course, the updated Persian army. So, you know, we've already seen the Persian army in action, I think, two times ago when we played Field of Glory 2. Uh, now this is an updated version of it. And things have certainly changed. They don't have those long Persian shields anymore. I mean, they do have them, but they seem to have almost been improved. Uh, it doesn't look like they're made out of, um, you know, you know, wick or anything like that. It actually looks like they're made pretty sturdy here. And they have expert armored horse archers. <laughs> so that, that, as soon as you see expert uh, before just about anything, uh, unless it's a doctor treating an illness you have, you, you should be concerned. It's an enemy in war. It, it doesn't bode well. So I'm going to move those guys up. I have to go ahead and take the attack to the enemy. I'm also going to move up with these armored horse archers here. And they're led by Hannibalianus Anatolicus. Yeah, the name started getting pretty interesting as, as the uh, empire progressed. And we've already moved up the Limitane. I will move up Belisarius right here as well. And I think that's it. We'll end the turn. All right. They are definitely not attacking us. And I don't like this because what does it mean? It means as soon as we get up to these horse archers, they're going to start firing and immediately retreat. We need to hit that group very soon. Give me just one second, guys. Uh, one minute. We are going to uh, just have to take one little one minute break. Uh, shall return.
Thanks so much for your patience, folks. So I'm definitely concerned here and open to any suggestions um, as we approach this Persian line. I'm almost certain that they're going to be firing at us, moving back, firing at us, moving back, etc. cetera. Uh, and Pixel saying, did you name a unit a grip as gripper? So we didn't. I think this is a, we can only name it previous uh, to the, uh, the actual game itself. And look at that. There is uh, Simone right there, guys, who is currently using the Slytherin group tag. So make sure to ask him any questions you have about the game. Um, and he may be, very well may be able to actually answer you guys. Okay. I've got to get my courage about me a little bit. And I think what I'm going to do is we do have our own horse archers. So we're going to start to have to kind of micromanage our units. And specifically, let's micromanage these horse archers so we get ahead of the enemy. The, the problem is they're horse archers. They have a lot more of them, and they're heavily armored. So if we're going to, you know, get into contact with them, we want to get into contact with them very, very quickly and not give them a chance, essentially, to get away. Now, these flanker units are interesting, to say the least. Um, you know, I guess the name suggests they would be great at flanking. What I, from what I can see, they look like a horse archer unit, and their distance seems to be about two tiles, which is great if that's the case. That is definitely a horse archer unit that can fire at a significant distance, and that would be a big advantage. That being said, I don't know if the Persians have a similar unit. The Persians are excellent with bows, so they might be doing the same exact thing. And just as, um, as mentioned here by Simone, Absolutely. Um, in terms of a desert environment, you know, horse archers are pretty much the best way to approach the enemy. You know, you, you can see the enemy. You don't have to worry about them hiding out in the woods or anything like that. So it tends to be a very good tactic. And I wonder if it was after the Huns that uh, the Romans really started adopting this kind of military strategy. In fact, if you guys can let me know in the comments down below, I would love to know. Because this army, to me, uh, resembles so much more, um, of course, besides the fact that it looks much prettier, but it, it, it really resembles to me the fighting style of the Huns almost. You've got like sort of a light spear group, um, and then you've got a tremendous amount of horse archer units and other missile units that are on horses which to me suggests at least that maybe they did take some, some lessons from the Huns. But again, that's just speculation. I, I'm, not, I'm not backing that up with any sort of historical reference at all. Uh, it's just kind of what it seems like to me. Okay, I think I'll end the turn there. You could always press tab if you're wondering, guys, how to find out if you've moved all your units. If you're not sure, just hit tab in this case. We haven't moved um, Briennius, and I don't want to. So let's end the turn. Okay, they're kind of taking the bait. You see that guy right there that's on the river tile? It's not really a river, but uh, I guess a river bed. There's a little bit of water in there. I wouldn't drink it, though. Uh, it's a stream. So hopefully, since they've put themselves in this position, we can hit them with a really hard charge with our heavy cavalry and scatter them. Uh, again, that's very wishful thinking, so we just have to hope that that, seems, that actually works. Unfortunately, with these units, it's very easy for the enemy just to take flight, just to run away, uh, to get away from us. So, for instance, we'll charge here, and actually even here, it doesn't even look like the charge would be that effective. Um, this is actually a horse archer unit, but much like the Persian units in their previous armies, they're just as good fighting on their horses as they are firing off their horses. They're very good. So what I think I'll do, actually, is I'll try to weaken him a bit. Actually, no, 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 no. I've got a better idea. First things first, charge here. So we can kind of use their positioning against them, I think. Take this unit. No, the zone of control is going to change. That's unfortunate. All right, let's charge with... No, not this guy. I will move forward with Briannius, but we're going to be careful with him. Turn and fire. 42! My goodness! That is effective. Well, let's keep firing. Right up close and personal. And they held firm, but the fact that they're holding firm suggests that they are undergoing morale checks. And they evaded. That's what I'm talking about, guys. That's the danger, is them evading every time we attack. Let's go ahead and fire at their general here. And this is going to be Atarpat's son of Farnaspa. 
it's pretty unlikely that we hit him with an arrow after all this unit has 705 men in it but you know you never know you never know so if we actually manage to hit him uh with an arrow and kill the general that's going to be a huge morale boost to our men and it's going to they're going to lose a tremendous amount of morale the enemy nice wonderful let's keep it up 18 and we're so close the light javelin men are just not close enough to really make contact And I think I'm just going to go ahead and, and proceed moving forward with the Spearmen here once again. Get closer to the enemy line. With this group, we probably have to do something fairly similar to what we're doing there on the left side. So let's move up. Now, Hannibalianus Anatolicus is actually a horse archer himself. So we do have a horse archer general here. And I'm hoping that that, you know, um, that mix of having a good general as well as some very very elite experienced troops like these armored horse archers is enough to take out their expert horse archers <laughs> i'm not sure it is and with the noble lancers let's move forward as well it's interesting that they're dismountable so you can actually fight with them hello visitation Uh, B. Vargas is saying, uh, Belisarius is one of my favorite generals. How are you doing, B. Vargas? Good to see you, man. Hello, Malay. Thank you, Pixel. Very cool stuff. I'm going to have to take a look at that after the stream. Looking great. Good to see you too, DK Leech. And Warrior Donut. Oh, nice. Warrior Donut got a game key. Excellent. So Warrior Donut is a regular here on the stream. I'm very happy that uh, he managed to grab a key there. Hmm, what to do, what to do. Yeah, we'll definitely move out with that unit. And I think even with the Belisarius, I might head over here to the left flank. Let's end the turn and see what the Persians have up their sleeves. We can evade too. Unfortunately, we can't escape. So we actually kind of trapped ourselves in that situation. As you can see, it's amazing that our men have not even been disrupted with that attack. That really shows the strength of our men. I don't want those elephants getting anywhere near me. They're way too close. Please go away, elephants. Why do the Persians need elephants? It looks like they also go to a great, um, a great degree to really decorate those elephants i mean that's that's not cheap that looks like pure gold okay what to do so unfortunately in terms of attack that's not going to happen uh, i think the next best thing is we turn towards the enemy but see the enemy can flank us from here so i'm almost tempted to attack here but what i'm going to do instead is just get over here turn and fire let the enemy know that we are around essentially move this general up Brianius. And maybe get a flank attack on the enemy from here. So let's go for it. And we just killed, we just killed the enemy general. In fact, I just got an achievement unlocked. I don't know if that came up on the stream, flanker achievement. We just killed the enemy general. That's hilarious. So that was quick. That was very quick. That's what you get for messing with Byzantium. And I think we're going to go ahead and finish up the job. Without their general, they are not going to be nearly as tough we can actually maybe even cause a massive break here. Dispersed. The great thing about dispersals is the fact that we don't have to chase the enemy unit. We've killed them all right there, basically. And that really makes things a lot easier for us. All right. Let's keep firing at this scout. 21. Nice. Don't let me down. Don't let me down, Javelin men. Oh, my goodness. I think that's the first time... I've actually gotten a break on cavalry using javelin men. I'm very proud of myself. Oh, I thought that would be a better attack. What about assisting with this one? No. So what I think I'll do here is just turn and fire. You can never go wrong with turning and firing. I mean, at least you're putting some, some damage down range. So if the enemy is having as much trouble as you are making a move, they're, they're going to face very similar problems. I would turn and fire with this unit, but I'm kind of afraid that 
If I do, then they'll get a flank attack. So I'm just going to shoot regularly. We're not going to be as effective because we're not actually turning our horses to fire at the enemy. We're just kind of shooting over our shoulder. But as you can see, it still manages to get quite a few kills. Forward. I'm going to try a different um, technique here. And I use this technique when I'm playing as the Greeks. Uh, of course, I'm playing as the Greeks now, but um, really the Byzantines. I mean like hoplite phalanxes. I like to sort of, instead of having just one straight line, I sort of do a checkerboard pattern. This occasionally works um, to get the enemy sort of stuck into our gaps and then just to cut them up into pieces. Sounds really brutal. That sounded really morbid, man. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> I try to keep this, I try to keep this stream pretty, pretty, uh, you know, lighthearted, but just listen to myself and like, goodness. Well, ancient warfare was not not pretty. Let's put it that way. Pretty vicious stuff. So I'm pretty sure the enemy has moved forward here. The issue here is they do have an enclosure, and this is an obstacle. So I believe that they're going to be getting some actual defensive bonuses. Not 100% certain on that. Why not just take out the slingers? You know, we can get massive shots on them and just wait for the enemy to, to make their move. That's exactly what I'm going to do. No javelin ears. Don't, don't get too close. There we go. And let's see how good of a shot Hanabiglianus Anatolicus is. 39, not bad. We've had better, though. Look at the distance that these horse archers can fire. That's, that's one thing I love here. 45, man. <laughs> these slingers are extremely tough. So they have 747 men. We've gotten that down to 552 men. And they're still fighting. They are still fighting. As for the irregular foot, I'm not even sure I want them to join us in battle because all that's going to happen is they're going to break and be completely useless to us. So, once again, we turn it over to Persia, the evil empire. Because Persia's not, not actually evil. We're just, we're, we have to say that because we're playing as Belisarius. In fact, I think I might, I would prefer to live in ancient Persia um, than in the ancient Byzantine Empire, at least as a peasant. Here we go. Finally, they're moving forward. So they're absolutely taking that land, and I th I'm trying to draw them out into the desert. At that point, I feel a lot more confident in attacking them, especially when they have these reinforcing lancer units. Uh, are these cataphracts? Uh, they certainly look like them. They look very, very dangerous. Yep, sure enough, those are cataphracts. And this is, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, probably the, the best defended uh, cavalry unit you can have. They are just jam-packed with armor. And they're pretty good at uh, charging as well. Look at that guy. 78. 78 with the, with the bow attack. I mean, if we thought our archers were good, then these Persian archers are putting us to shame. Hmm. Well, he decided to get in the way here, so let's fire. 75. Hey, we're doing pretty well ourselves. We could actually go for a charge here. I think that's what I'm going to do. And hopefully we get a rear charge. In fact, I'll get a rear charge with this uh, damaged unit. Breaks. Beautiful. And look at that, guys. So we disrupted this unit and this unit. That's what I'm talking about, uh, morale disruption. So the units take a morale check, and in this case, the morale check worked out on our end completely. So what do we want to do now? We want to completely destroy the enemy, just finish them off once and for all. I'm actually thinking a charge would work very well, and he's going to evade. He won't be able to escape, or at least he won't be able to escape too far. Mm, once again, I can't attack with Belisarius. Excuse me, not Belisarius, uh, Briennius. Could do a little shot like that, but that's about it. Let's move the Lancers up. At this point, we're forcing the enemy to make a move. They better move that cavalry unit. Whether they attack us or, or move him elsewhere, they're going to have to make a decision, or else our spearmen will be up here, and they'll deal with their cavalry unit, which I'm actually kind of hoping for. Ooh, we've got some... Uh, 
light horse archers. Now, I'm going to try to charge. They will not stick around, but we'll get a bit closer to the enemy. And as crazy as this is, I am putting Anastasius Asendinus right there on the front line. I mean, come on. He's a spear unit. He should be able to deal with cavalry fairly well. And I'm actually going to try to run away with the Fierce Nomad Horse Archers. Not so fierce after all. Especially not when uh, they're getting hammered by Persian uh, arrows here. Persian, Persian archers are nice and sexy, says uh, Aaron Wynn. Uh, Warrior Donut says, I've spent silly hours playing this game. Dusty Monk is a former EVE Online player. Jump just made me lose my ship. <laughs> And Adreath is saying, excellent game. I really want every army list from 3000 BC to 1500 AD. Yes, me too. Me too. I would love that. B. Vargas, now if they can make a TV series of Count Belisarius like the BBC did with I, Claudius, it would be pretty awesome. It certainly would. And I, Claudius, for anybody that hasn't seen it, um, it's I believe you can watch it on YouTube. Uh, it's copyright free because it was produced by the BBC. I believe it was something like uh, 44 years ago or 45 years ago, something like that. Actually, maybe even earlier. And um, it's really great. It's got also Brian Blessed in it, plays Augustus. He does a great job. Brian Blessed, you guys may know, is playing Henry VIII. And the guy is just incredible as Augustus. But of course, um, the star of the show is uh, I, Claudius and I, Claudius. And I can't recall the name of the guy who plays him. I'm so ashamed. Unfortunately, he didn't have as much fame after I, Claudius, but he did a great job playing, uh, playing him. Of course, like Claudius always tried to play the fool to avoid assassination, and it worked. Uh, his family basically thought he was stupid when he really was quite intelligent. Can we get another shot? Can we get another shot? Please say yes. Oh, wonderful. The fierce nomad horse archer is going to get a shot on the cataphracts. I mean, my only choice here to deal with a cataphract, a charging cataphract unit is to hit them before they hit us. Because the fact is, if they hit us, we can't fire. That's one rule um, that I wish could be changed. Basically, I wish that there was a way to still take a risk and allow the player to fire into the group, but then maybe have another dice roll that could potentially affect your units more. But in this case, if we get into combat, close combat with them, we can't we can't fire at them with, with our missiles. We can charge them, but we can't fire at them. And that certainly complicates things. Ooh, 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 we've got another attack right here. It doesn't look like it's going to go very well, but I have faith. Faith, the enemy of reason, as you can see here. It's okay. We'll be all right. Again, I'm going to charge. Um, I know that the odds are not particularly in our favor, but I think just the massive amount of attacks going on here is going to potentially disrupt that unit. Belisarius is here, men. Have faith. I think that's all we're going to be able to do there. Derek Jacoby, that's it. Thank you, guys. He's excellent. He's excellent. And yes, absolutely, Pixel. So Pixel's right. He he is known as mostly a stage actor. Uh, I know he did Macbeth. I know he did a lot of other plays. Um, it's a shame, though, that there wasn't a series produced like I, Claudius. I, I fear that, and, and it's kind of sad, I fear that this generation, I'm not talking about everybody because I, you know, I'm only 29, so... I sort of make up this generation. Uh, but they, they just can't watch things like I, Claudius because the attention span isn't there. Uh, it, it's, it's just not developed enough to really appreciate that kind of show. At least that's been my, my uh, what I've noticed with people. I love I, Claudius. And I think I've watched all 10, or is it 11 episodes? I've watched them all hundreds of times. Hundreds of times. Especially that one Caligula episode, which got really weird. With Sir John Hurt playing Caligula. Unbelievable. 
I'm really surprised they haven't used those elephants yet. I'm happy they haven't, but I'm really surprised that they haven't used them in a charge yet. And watch, I'm going to jinx, my, jinx myself, because as soon as I say that, the elephants are going to come charging right into our men. There's no doubt about that. Beautiful. So we just rallied there. And look at that! Congratulations! We also got a break. So I think somehow you redeeming that just just broke that unit. Somehow. I don't know how it worked, but it did. Congratulations. Hello, Ash. Good to see you. Yeah, Pixel. Yes, yes, yes. Definitely. We always have interesting things going on in this chat. What could possibly go wrong with elephants charging into infantry, says Arnwen, right? That's, they're just like big puppies with trunks and, you know, these massive, massive tusks. And, you know, they can step on you and squash you like a bug. But otherwise, they're just really nice creatures. Actually, I think elephants in general are fairly friendly compared to a lot of different wild animals. Uh, but obviously trained elephants, uh, trained to stomp on the enemy, oh, you're in deep trouble. All right, here we go. The armored noble lancers against the armored horse archers. Let's go for it. Oh, we're not stopping. 51. They held firm at 51. These guys are in insane. Uh, so we will go ahead and charge now with uh, Bryennius. I'm not sure if it's Bry or Brie. It might be Briennius. Like the cheese. Ooh, I really want to charge with the Spearman unit. So I'm going to charge this unit with the Spearman unit. Sure enough, they're going to run away. The Limitane are going to go ahead and take that position. Uh, unfortunately, this is this is the problem with facing a cavalry army, is the chances that our Limitane are even going to catch up with the enemy are, are you know, minuscule at best. Turn and fire. And a flank charge. That always seems to work wonders for us, doing the flank charges. Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. So if we actually remain in combat here, if you guys are looking at that, it's impact, win 5%, draw 69%, lose 26%. Those are essentially the chances that I undergo with the first charge. But if you look at the melee, and this is why you really have to pay attention to these numbers, um, once we actually get into the fight, our chances of winning are 46%, our chances of drawing are 53%, and our chances of losing are only 1%. So I think this, you know, odds-wise, this is a fair bet. So I'm going to go ahead and take it. But you always have to make those decisions in this game, and you're not always going to have the right answer. Beautiful. We actually caught up with those armored horse archers, guys. That is lucky, but what's not lucky is now we are behind the Persian lines, as you can see here. And uh, something tells me they're not going to be too friendly to our units. I just get that feeling. I just get the feeling that they're going to absolutely slaughter any unit that is behind their lines. Okay, interesting. So Anastasius Asindinus is the first to attack the elephants, killing none and losing 105 of his own men. Not a good start for Asendinus at all. Now, he's one of Belisarius' generals. Actually, more, more appropriately, he's one of Justinian's generals. And I'm not going to attack, just move forward. Well, he actually stuck around. Okay, now dealing with the cataphracts. This is my main concern. And again, all I think we can do is, is just lower the amount of men in that unit. That's the most important thing. Just keep lowering the numbers. Getting right up close and personal with the horse nomads. And we might as well go ahead and chase down these slingers. I'm pretty sure we can catch them rather quickly. In fact, it looks like we already caught up to them there. 
Unless it's just the desert that killed them, which, hey, it's possible. If you're running through the desert, very little water, um, you know, very high speeds, there's a chance you're not going to survive that. Probably want a medical personnel around, especially if it's me. If you're out of shape, don't do that ever. That's not a good idea. I really want to charge this elephant, but I know better. I'm just so tempted to you know, try to get rid of this one unit. I'm going to move the Legia Comatensis as close as I can to that elephant. I think he's going to be the key to getting rid of that pesky pachyderm. Unfortunately, we can't charge. This could be due to the zone of control. Uh, but I think, no, I don't think it is. I think we might be able to charge next turn as long as this unit doesn't charge us. Which, if they have any common sense whatsoever, they will. And yeah, we're staying put right there. Hey, Barrel, long time no see. And Krupp Drug, good to see you, mate. Iceni Raider. See here what Alexis is saying. A Lightfoot cannot charge heavier troops except in rough or difficult terrain um, unless they are already routed. Ah, thank you. Thank you, Alexis. Okay, let's see. These Limitane Spearmen, are, they seem actually rather a rather good choice. Uh, considering the fact that most of the combat is occurring on, on a horse, we don't necessarily want to put much into these guys. And I think a spear unit is perfect. A sword unit seems like it would be sort of obsolete in, uh, in this battle. Let's end the turn. Don't break, men. You can hold on. Persia's time has come. We must end this kingdom. This empire, I should say. Wow, look at that. And again, those shields actually are similar. Um, I said earlier that they weren't, but they are similar to the to the earlier shields that the Persians were using. They're just a bit updated. They're more updated. It doesn't look like they're made of wicker anymore. It looks like they're actually made of some hard wood, some, some very decent wood. There might even be some metal thrown in there, um, some iron or, or something like that. Ooh, that is cheeky. So they just, they, those slingers were like, forget it. We're not going to run. We're just going to like, we know we're going to get run over by this guy. So let's throw some rocks at the, at the unit. All right, we can, two can play at that game. Come on, guys, come on, make it happen. So a lot of actually, actual minor combats going on. Uh, not a lot being lost on either side in these minor combats. There, we finally managed to disrupt them. We just fragmented that unit. And if this continues, we are absolutely on the road to victory. Unfortunately, they disrupted us too. Thankfully, our Byzantine flankers had the common sense to immediately retreat. And I think I still get a flank attack. I certainly do. I was worried they would run, and they did. Uh, but let's see if we can make up for that. Oh, yes, I think we can. And the Byzantine flankers are going to do what they... What they do best, continue with their flank attack. Sure enough, we've broken the unit, and they're going to disperse. They have all been killed or somehow managed to escape through our massive group of men and make their way off into the open desert, which, as you've probably imagined, is, is pretty inhospitable. There we go. Amazing. Look at that. We already got a charge, and we also disrupted this unit. Uh, because of the morale check. I love the morale check. I love it, especially when it works in my favor. Uh, I'm not so supportive of it when it doesn't, of course. Come on. Let's do this, man. Briannius. You can do it. Briannius. He's really upsetting me right now. He's a general. He should act like one, and he's just, you know, this is like, look at that expensive armor. That stuff costs 
probably the same amount as an entire village in this time period. Maybe just the helmet itself. You know, this is, uh, we, we want him to actually be able to route the troops instantly. Obviously, that's not realistic, but we want to do something. And as you can see here, with the elephants, even after a while, uh, the melee combat is terrible for us. There's just no way to deal with these guys. So we're not going to deal with them. We're going to ignore them. Not going to attack here either. Now I'm really tempted to charge here. But I'll use this unit so we get a proper flank. And we can actually still attack here. The problem is that our melee is not going to be very good. If they were disrupted, I would take this risk. But since they're not, I, I will not take that risk. Let's continue the fight with the irregular foot. They're surprisingly holding out pretty well against the enemy. What's not, what's not surprising is the fact that the cataphracts are still a hazard to us and they are not even remotely affected. An impact charge against cataphracts. This feels like a bad idea, but I'm doing it anyway. And I think we can run the enemy down here. Beautiful. Disrupted. We've got the enemy at 17% already, which is pretty good. Hmm. I don't know if a flank attack would really work very well against an elephant, but we'll, you know, we'll probably end up finding out here. Yeah, that's it. I'm ending the turn. Oh, it begins. It begins. Yeah, he's absolutely making use of his elephants now. Luckily, they seem to be away from our largest force. Specifically, they seem to be away from our cavalry, and they're focused mainly on our spearmen. But it doesn't look like even our spearmen are going to be able to keep these guys away. Um, they look pretty deadly, and I'm guessing we need to rout this army before those elephants do uh, irreparable damage. I've also never seen the Persians this aggressive. Generally, the Persians, from what I've seen at least, my experiences with their earlier army, seem to play a little more defensively. Uh, they're being very aggressive here. That could just be the fact that we raised the difficulty setting as well. So we're currently playing on a governor difficulty. Instead of our usual legate. Look at that. We didn't even have to get him down to um, disrupted. He just immediately broke. Or I should say fragmented. We didn't even need to fragment him. Unfortunately... This unit is badly fragmented and completely surrounded by enemy cavalry. Okay, what to do, what to do. If anybody wants to share their thoughts, you can, of course, share them in the uh, chat section. If you guys have any strategic tips or, or suggestions, we always love to hear them. I know Alexius always has a lot of very good ones. Uh, Lex is saying a bit late now, but with Lancers, you don't want to be fighting in a, a maze of irrigation ditches. It tends to dampen their charge and hence cancels the effect of Lances. Ah, interesting. <laughs> B. Vargas makes a great point. Charging the cataphracts is probably a better idea than being charged by cataphracts. Good point. Oh, goodness, Alexis. <laughs> Ouch. Let's hope not. Let's hope not. Okay, so we're continuing forward, hopefully, to victory. One thing I want to do is focus on this unit here. I want to break this guy. Fortunately, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to get in there, but we can continue to firing on these guys. And in fact, I'm going to move up a bit and use my javelin men to fire at them as well. Really not to fire, more to throw something at them. That was not very effective. 
Then again, just the fact that we managed to um, actually get them to be disrupted, disrupted a little bit, I think is going to help. But we need to be winning these close combat fights. That's really what needs to happen. So we could charge in here. And actually, I think that's exactly what we're going to do. 51. They held firm. I mean, these Persians do not want to give up. Once again, they don't want to give up. If you guys are taking a look here, by the way, this is a very important distinction to make. You can see that their flag is kind of torn up, and what that represents is their casualties. Uh, their morale is fine. Despite the fact that they started with 684 men and they're now down to 405, they are, they're quite content. So if that's not brave, I don't know what is. Um, essentially losing a third of your army and just being like, eh, eh it's not a big deal. We're going to keep fighting. You know, those guys are definitely uh, very, very brave. Hmm. Again, the odds are not particularly in our favor here, but I think we should try to fight back. We should at least try. Look at that. Amazing. I wish they didn't hold firm. And we're going to do another charge here. But before we do that, I want to get into position over here. And immediately start doing some flank damage here. It's, I don't know if uh, the flank still applies when we're firing missiles. But at least we're doing some damage to that enemy. And hopefully forcing them to focus on us. And again, I guess we can't get an attack here on this unit. What about, oh my goodness, flanking the cataphracts, guys. From the side once again. Impact 66. They held firm. Unbelievable. They held firm again. <laughs> I mean, these Persians are just extremely brave. This we can't allow to get to us. So look at this. They've also got some levy spearmen here. Just very standard levy spearmen. And the goal is now that we're dealing with the elephants, we at least can't let the levy spearmen get to us. Because I don't think that would end well. Um, I'm going to take a little risk here. I'm going to charge the elephants to see if they'll turn to, towards us and see if then we could get a flank attack with the noble lancers. Uh, we can get a flank charge, but... It's not going to be very effective. Look at this. Even with a flank charge, uh, cohesion won't drop on contact as mounted versus elephants. So that's a rule there and an unfortunate one. Hmm. Cowards. We're going to have to do the flank charge. This unit will bring him up and just prepare him for the flank charge. Uh, but right now we'll fire on the expert horse archers there. And actually we managed to disrupt them. I don't think they were expecting that. Come on, Legio Comatensis. Or is it Comatenensis? first or second okay ending the turn once again this is really really close fascinating fight just fascinating so they just broke our unit our guys did pass the morale check um the surrounding units we can be happy about that but of course losing a unit is never good never so unless they're uh they're a regular foot. <laughs> then it is. Okay, we actually disrupted one of the elephants. Unfortunately, that irregular foot is going to be destroyed. Almost certain. I'm amazed they haven't run yet. We actually stand a chance here at being able to route one of these elephants. Okay, so they're getting a little desperate here. They're even charging us with their disrupted units. I think that signals that they are a little afraid. What I find amazing also is just how these Persians built these massive structures on top of the elephant's back uh, to be able to sit in there and fire arrows. I know that um, the uh, Indians all did the same thing. Many of the, uh, of the Hindu armies did similar things as well, essentially 
uh, erecting these towers on top of the elephants from which they could fire bows while the elephant is also, you know, stampeding uh, through the enemy. I would never want to have that job. That seems, that seems just extremely frightening. There we go. Two fragmentations on the enemy side. This is what we need, guys. Please give us a third. Please give us a third. Come on. You can give us that one. There we go. That's going to be a break. Absolutely. And sure enough, the cataphracts, not so tough anymore, I don't think. And there we go. The irregular foot. Sure enough, they broke. They disrupted a unit. They're just a, com a consistent disappointment, aren't they? That's okay. We'll, uh, we'll see if we can't improve them. So, um, once again, I'm going to go for the charge. The charge is only 1% chance of a win. However, if we remain in contact with them, that increases uh, pretty dramatically. Nope. Come on, boys. I believe in you. Actually, I don't. Actually, I don't. These guys, I do. Wondering if we should disperse this unit. Now, this is why I'm thinking that. Um, these armored horse archers are actually going to chase that unit for as much as for as long as again. Oh no, sorry. Actually, I think it was uh, Richard that mentioned that they will not chase. The skirmishers won't chase. I could be mistaken on that. Um, or do the flank attack. Yeah, we're going to do the flank attack. And we can actually get another one right here. 27. Not bad. F 48 men down. The numbers here are incredible. Just the losses. So this guy's disrupted. I think I just want to sort of turn him forward and just have him wait. Hopefully he'll reorganize here pretty soon. And in the meantime, I want to see if we can't break this fellow here. And at this point, we should be able to roll up the enemy completely. That's, I mean, the best case scenario. So I'm going to start sort of, you can see here how I've switched the map so that I can start focusing on moving this army up, almost constructing a new line here and moving forward to roll the enemy up. Just like a, a Persian carpet. Do you, see, do you see the awful pun there? I'm sorry for the, the brain damage I just caused half the audience. Here we go. Just like a Persian rug. I'm going to roll them up. The amount of memes we could do here is endless. Horrible, horrible, useless memes. Let's go. Here we go, 21. They're still holding firm, though. They are still holding firm. Now, with this 97 from Brianius, I mean, he should be able to break this unit. And another thing that might happen is they might not actually ever get disrupted. They might just break um, on next contact. Because as you can see, they're down to 285 of 684. It's not natural. It's just not natural. Okay, wow. The flank charge here from our spearmen is going to be extremely effective. Look at this. We just killed six elephants. And it looks like we've got like 60 elephants here. Just the fact that you can get 60 elephants in a group like this is terrifying to me. So incredibly, on the charge at least, our regular foot are going to do okay against their spearmen. Pretty, pretty evenly matched, really. And now I will start the flank attack with the cavalry. We fragmented them. Guys, hopefully this is a break. See, I'm trying to fragment them before that uh, Levy Spearman unit comes crashing into us. Okay, turn around. Great work, Anatolikas. Hmm. Okay, let's keep going this way. And let's see if we can't break this unit. We're not going to break them with the Javelin Men. I doubt it anyway, but we'll try. Our chance of a loss is pretty low, too, so we might as well, you know, damage their uh, 
lower the amount of men they actually have in the unit. Struturus is a little bit scared by how happy you are killing those wonderful elephants. <laughs> yeah, indeed. It might have something to do with my grandfather uh, being raised in Mozambique and hunting a lot. Uh, so Pixel was t talking about the uh, tournament system. I think, I'm not sure if, um, if uh, this is currently being watched by Slytherin Group. I hope it is, because this is definitely something you mentioned to them regarding tournament systems and stuff. Uh, I know for sure that Simonia, the new social media manager, is doing a lot on his part, a lot. He's doing a great job at sort of bringing everything back. So if you have any ideas, I would definitely shoot a message over to him uh, on the forum. Oh, yeah, I, I think everybody would, Vargas. Sengoku's a great game. It, it really is. It's uh, it's old for me. I mean, you know, when I play it, I'm like, oh, my goodness. But I, I recall, you know, first playing it and being like, oh, I love this. All right, let's continue, guys. I love this conversation, but we must, we absolutely must continue against the Persians. Thanks, Twitch, for the advertisement. We appreciate it. Okay. Hmm. Okay, we're going to end the turn. I have confidence we're going to win this one, but you never know. You really don't. And considering the fact that our Limitani Spearmen are getting pretty badly beaten, you know, it, it, I think it's too early to tell. It's definitely one of the toughest enemies I faced for a first battle in the campaign. Generally, the first battle in the campaign, you guys have seen me play a lot of them, uh, it's, it's a complete rollover. In this case, I'm actually, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm crunching some numbers for sure. Here we go. Once again, the Irregulars. Why do we even, why did we even take them? Why? For shame. For shame, I say. I'm not going to take those guys again. Oh, wow. Okay, so we were fragmented. I was actually afraid that we retreated there. Thankfully, we did not retreat, but these elephants have retreated. So we got rid of one group of elephants. Let's see if we can't get rid of another. Again, it certainly takes some sacrifice um, on the part of our infantry to take down those groups of pachyderms, but eventually they are capable of doing that. And as you can see, we've got some rallies on our side. That's always a good sign, especially right in the middle of a battle for a unit to rally like that. And sure enough, the auto break, I called it. I knew that that unit was low on men. I mean, they'd lost essentially two-thirds of their manpower. You just can't keep fighting. It doesn't matter how brave you are. It's pointless. Nice. A few spears got in there, killed three elephants. Interesting. A lot of enemies falling back here. And more units fragmented. I'm liking it, guys. I'm liking it a lot. All right, let's turn and fire at Pedos. So this is their commander-in-chief. We killed one of their main generals. Uh, we have not yet killed their commander-in-chief. Obviously, taking him out would significantly improve our chances of victory. And another thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a flank attack. And this is exactly why I turn the units this way. We're going to do a flank attack on the expert horse archers here and break them. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Look at that. They held firm. They did have to do a morale check, but they managed to hold firm. And I'm going to do the same thing with this unit. And we've broken another group of enemies. Now look at the battlefield, guys. Now look at the battlefield. We are truly rolling them up at this point. And this is exactly what you hope for when you get a flank attack with cavalry. So we're just going to continue eastwards, keep on smashing into them until they're all gone. Or until they just give up, which will probably come first.
Let's see how Alexius. What do you think so far? Are we uh, are we doing okay? I hope so. I certainly do. I'm going to move forward, trying. What I'm trying to do is catch this guy in the rear, and I think I I just did. So there we go. Impact against Peros. We'll charge here as well. Although this charge isn't looking so great. What if we charge from here? Oh, that's looking a lot better. Yeah, we'll even take a chance with these guys, even though the odds are against us. The Limitani are showing their skill here and their ferocity. I'm loving it. Now, let's see if we can't break this elephant unit. Three down. They're still holding firm. Hit him again. Three down. They're still holding firm. This could take a little while. What's also surprising is this unit is still around. And I think they'll. what's going to happen to them is what happened to that uh, unit recently, which is they're probably just going to end up breaking simply due to uh, a lack of manpower. It's a testament to the fighting ability of the Byzantine, says Alexius. Very nice. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. A week ago, I did an interesting progressive campaign in 200 AD. I'm speaking for Adriath here in the chat. Uh, Rome versus Rome. The ally system did an excellent job in giving a Civil War narrative effect. Indeed, I lost. Uh, my Praetorians killed me. It was a Civil War indeed. Wow. Yes. Those Praetorian guards, you know, it's like you think they're going to defend you. And then all of a sudden it's like, boss, can we get a pay raise, please? Uh, well, we don't have the money. Ah, next emperor. That's, that's always terrified me. I, I would never have wanted to be one of the sort of late emperors. It just seems frightening to me. Just absolutely frightening. Thank you again, Twitch. We appreciate the advertisements from Twitch. We really do. Okay. I think this is going to be a victory. I, I, I've called it already. We'll see, though. And I'm not usually this confident. Uh, Alexius will tell you that. I, I've played his games for long enough <laughs> to, to basically be very unconfident in general uh, when I'm playing. But in this case, I feel like we've got this. We've, we've got this. We just have to, as long as we don't make any mistakes... Uh, this this cat is in the bag. Let's put it that way. Okay. Ending the turn. And the Irregulars again. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. And actually, one of our guys did fail the morale test there. Uh, getting a disruption. And we've also got a rally on the enemy side. It's not worrying me, but it's just sort of, you know, it's happened. It's going to take us a little longer to win, but I still think this victory is in our, in our hands. Good shooting there by the enemy. So our Limitani spearmen are kind of uh, kind of limiting their movement. You can see a lot of these enemy infantry units that are just kind of staying behind the lines. I don't think that's doing them any favors. Ooh, another disruption on our end. What we really want to do is get that commander-in-chief. Again, if we can take out the commander-in-chief, we've already taken out one of their uh, generals. That's that, I think that's going to turn the tide. There we go. Disruption on the enemy side. And actually, one of our units did rally. And that's our cavalry unit as we proceed to the east. Oh, 
All right. We can actually do, um, it's a shame Simone's not watching because what we, uh, what we did last time, and we will bring this back, guys, is we would have a bet essentially deciding at this point, especially with a battle like this, where you could bet your sliffs on whether I'm going to win or lose. And we've had a lot of very fun moments with that. So that's certainly something I'd love to bring back, and I think, I think we probably can without much difficulty. Ooh, maybe I'll just rush forward and hit the enemy uh, spearmen. So even with their backs turned, the spearmen are going to withstand a charge very well. Um, in which case, I'm just going to go ahead and focus on the enemy um, cavalry, the commander-in-chief specifically. Even from here, we're still not going to do very well against them. Look at that. That's interesting. So I think I'm just going to trap uh, the enemy general in here. There's no way that commander-in-chief is going to be able to escape. And you could imagine the situation in real life, the, the terror he would face, realizing that he is now trapped. There is no way out. Um, if he runs, he's dead. If he stays, he's dead. All in all, he's dead. And of course, this is Pedal's the commander-in-chief. There we go. He's dead. He's dead. <laughs> Let's say it again. <laughs> Completely gone, finished, and look at all of the javelins just sort of littering the ground here over this guy's grave. That is a massive win on our side. Killing the commander in chief is big. Now let's see if we can't kill the rest of these elephants. I don't want to focus on the elephants, though. Again, they shouldn't be our main focus. If we happen to wipe one out in this battle, you know, great. If not, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. Actually, let me attack from the north here. Got him at 42. I know I shouldn't take this risk because this unit is fragmented, but I'm going to move up, fire, and I'm going to see if we can't catch them with a charge. I think they'll evade, but we might be able to catch them, and sure enough, we have, and we've broken them. That was very lucky. Very, very lucky. And look at that, a morale check, and that managed to disrupt their light horse archers. Unfortunately, our uh, armored horse archers are going to be chasing those cataphracts, although I can't really blame them. You know, just the fact that they won that battle was pretty amazing. Alright, continue moving forward here. And at this point, we're just going to turn and fire at the Levy Spearmen. Man, I love this roll up. This is looking great. So if we actually look at it from this angle, this is actually more realistic, uh, more, more realistic as to our perspective of the battle, because this is what we're trying to do, is push forward with this group. And they're sort of uh, still tangling with our spearmen. I think they will be breaking a lot of those spearmen very soon. But in the meantime, you know, we have this opportunity to keep on moving forward and hopefully catch them before that occurs. That's, that's the ideal situation, of course. No, that's not going to work. So, B. Vargas, that's a great question. This is a, um, well, it's essentially a generated battle um, because the campaign is sort of like, as you progress, uh, certain things are going to change, but there's a separate, you know, thing called, of course, the epic battles, which we can take a look at before the end of the stream if we'd like to. I'll actually let Alexius decide um, whether or not we go ahead and do that um, as it's his game because I'm not sure if we want to give too much away this is sort of like a preview right now. Um, you know, it is a release stream, but I'm not sure if we want to show you guys everything, but I could show you the epic battle, so I just want to get his okay first. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and do that before we end the stream. All right, so let's get back into this fight. Alex, if you, if you could just send me a private message, whether you want, you'd you like me to show it or not, because there are some pretty cool battles, um, and maybe, maybe I'm going to wait for you guys to buy the game to find them out. All right, I will charge here. Not the greatest idea because the enemy could flank attack. But I'm sort of just trying to attack wherever I can here uh, in an effort to break the enemy. Let 
move forward. Hmm. I don't like the fact that these guys are disrupted. But it's not like we can really move back, because then we're going to have to take a morale check anyway. Now, they do have a sub-general, an irregular foot sub-general. What is wrong with these Persians? They're insane. We do have to start moving these units up, uh, which, you know, will happen gradually. But we're kind of getting stuck here. We're so close. We're so close to getting them. But we've been closed before and lost, so I don't want to get too excited. One hundred and forty four Limitane spearmen going down in that fight. Not good. Not good at all. And those elephants are certainly doing their job. Uh, they are just smashing our spearmen to bits. And eventually, I think the enemy will break this line. I don't think we can reach them before they break that line. It just doesn't seem feasible. It could certainly happen, but it's unlikely. Very unlikely. Oh, they're going to actually put a fight up here. Yeah, that's not going to work out well for them. <laughs> they are facing a, a, a major general here. And Briannius is pretty good on a horse. So even with Limitani Spearmen, I, I don't think they have a chance. And finally, those elephants broke through. Uh, the morale check went fine, but, you know, we've got elephants that just broke through our line. That's, that's never good. It's never, ever good. What I'm hoping for is, if you guys are looking at this area right here, these two units are about to auto-break. Uh, they've lost a lot of men. If we could get a charge here on of the flank of this unit, we could auto-break him, cause this guy to take a morale check, and potentially just run right off the bat. Now, that's in the best-case scenario, of course, but I do believe that could occur. Now, unfortunately, that didn't work out very well. But fear not, we've got plenty of hope. Attack. And there we go. There's that auto break. And we did disrupt a unit. Wonderful. Unfortunately, we don't have any units that can attack him right now, but in time, that will change. Especially since we are finally turning around with these horse archers. Well, one of them is still <laughs> extremely angry at the cataphracts. And he's continuing to try and kill as many of them as possible. So let's see what we want to do here. I'm actually going to charge in with the Limitani Spearman. 102! Excellent attack! I was hoping that we would get a disruption with that attack because they actually went red, which, which means that, of course, the dice are rolling. Pretty close, though. I'll take that. And let's see what we can do with this unit. So, Brianius, once again, with the charge... Let's keep on charging. In fact, we could even go ahead and chase this unit with our flankers. But I think I want to just attack like this and see if we can't break them. It's a Spearman unit, but they cannot stand up to us. Yeah, let's get over here near the regular foot. I've never had any hope for a regular foot units, um, so I, I'm confident we can wipe them out. But maybe I'm underestimating their, their strength. Aha! Okay. Let's take a look here. 
Oh, yes, thank you. So we did do the bets. Great. Oh, you guys, I want to see how many people voted against me or for me. I guess we'll find out eventually. Make sure to let me know. Let me know who voted for and against. Okay, here we go. The attack continues. Could even charge in here, but that would be pointless. What I will do is move up and fire over here at the Eastern Archers. You didn't get a single one of them. Our guys need to boost their confidence a little bit. And at least we're finally moving. Our army is definitely moving at this point. We can actually spread them out a bit more. I don't necessarily need to, but that's what I want to do. Hmm. So I'll turn around with my regulars, but I'm, I'm not bringing them to the battlefield, even if they do uh, fully, you know, heal up in terms of morale. I, I just, I just don't trust them. I'm surprised that this attack is not deadlier, but it just seems that these spearmen have the ability to really watch every single angle um, that they could potentially be attacked from. Okay, let's end the turn. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. You guys can see I'm like checking, I'm double checking because, you know, this is so close to potentially being a defeat. I want to make sure that doesn't happen. Okay. Got some fragmentations on our end. We certainly are not going to are not going to be able to beat them by getting them to forty five percent. I don't think uh, we're going to have to go for the full sixty percent. Seems that that's just not going to occur. And that's amazing. Our horse archers actually caused the cataphracts to disperse there. There he goes. Let me throw this in another room. Yeah, it really could still go either way. I mean, you know, we're right now we're just looking at the kinds of units that still exist on the battlefield. The fact that our Limitani Spearmen are not doing as well as they should be, it frustrates me and it, it concerns me. That's for sure. Sixty-three percent. They have broken. This is what I like to see. Wow, they held firm. There was that bravery uh, that was being discussed earlier. They have certainly held firm against the enemy. 45% to 24%. We've got to make this happen. I am going for the charge. Like I said, I know that that unit has to break eventually. They just don't have enough men to stay in the battle. That's just the honest truth. Okay, let's go ahead and flip this around a bit. Flip the script, as it were. And I am going to attempt to charge. So we actually did get an impact charge. We succeeded. And what I'm going to do over here is move forward and immediately start firing with the flankers. Man, they're definitely flankers. They can, they can get behind enemy lines very quickly. Okay. 
Okay, here we go. Let's get a shot. And yeah, the issue here is no matter what attack we do, it's just not looking very good for us um, in terms of our Limitani Spearmen. I think our only chance is going to be to maybe get a flank attack on one of the enemy units uh, or something similar and break them that way. So we're going to bring some cavalry over here. Uh, let's bring some cavalry over here and eventually turn them around. Of course, we will bring Belisarius himself. Here we go. Disruption. Surprising disruption on the enemy side. But again, that's because primarily their, their loss of men. They had 726. They now have 360. And I'm definitely going to go for the disrupted unit here. So let's throw some missiles at them. And we're also going to fire. Fragmented. We potentially could actually route this elephant. Nope. You guys are being a little too positive. I mean, this battle might actually take too long to finish uh, during the stream. It's And this just goes to show you the replay value here. We are only on mission one of the campaign, just a single mission. Uh, and, of course, you could choose numerous campaigns with numerous different factions. Right now, we are playing specifically the Belisarius campaign, though, uh, where we are, of course, playing as the Byzantines. But this battle, it, it could go back and forth for quite a while. Let's end the turn. Ooh, some enemies rallying. I don't like that at all. So again, generally, enemies don't rally unless they have a good reason to. Unless they think that, oh, maybe we can still beat the enemy. And we don't want them thinking that at all. Good miss. Not a single one of those arrows hit us. And that elephant's absolutely going to break this uh, Limitani Spearman unit. With that much raw power, especially on a flank attack, we, we have no chance. Okay, I like that. Some disruption amongst the enemy Spearman. I didn't think it was possible. But it looks like they are not immortal after all. Okay, guys, we've got a few nice disruptions here. Um, this could potentially work for us. Thank you, compliment. Spreading positivity. Oh, goodness. Uh, I think that could be that could be uh, some sort of, uh, what's it called? Spreading advertisements for like. Congratulations! Very proud of you. Well done. All right. So, how do you guys really think this is going to go? Let's get some. Let's get some answers here, guys. What do you think? Belisarius on the charge, fragmenting the enemy. Limitani are going to follow up here. That's going to be a break. 105, and they didn't break. These guys are insane. They're just insane. There we go. Look at that, my friends. We're not done yet. Mm. 
massive flank charge here against the Levy Spearmen. They can't defend every single angle. And they're fragmented. Let's move forward with the um, the Levy Spearmen on our side. The Limitane. And we've broken them. They're going to disperse because, quite frankly, they have nowhere to run to. Charge. This is looking great right now. I think the roll-up is working very well. If anybody bet against me, uh, you might uh, you might want to try and talk um, talk Simone out of... Maybe he can reverse the bet for you guys. <laughs> we'll have to see. Let's charge. Uh, actually, I'll fire. We don't need to rush it. So I I'm not just going to rush in an attack. If something looks uncertain to me, I'm going to just kind of wait a bit. Because rushing it's going to get us killed. I'd love to hit this guy, but I'm almost certain he's going to... No, he broke! Unbelievable! So he just broke at the sight of the charging Limitane. Uh, which means that this unit was ready to break for quite a while here. Uh, he did not want to continue fighting. Okay, this guy we can bring back. And this guy too. But actually what I'm going to do is fire at the enemy's back. And sure enough, we broke another unit. Uh, that's going to be 48 down on the enemy side. They still have this expert horse archer unit. But with his back turned, we can actually cause a, a lot of heartache for him essentially. You know, he's constantly going to be fired at one way or another every turn. Wow, 39. Excellent job there. Let's see if we can't catch up with the cataphracts here. And in fact, we can. I, I, I always wanted to take out a few more of these cataphracts. And right there while they're waiting on the stream, that seems to be a perfect time to unleash our fury. Another thing I'll do is turn towards the enemy here with the flankers. And it looks like we can actually get a shot at uh, Anoshirovan, son of Artavajda. I'm sure I completely mispronounced that, but I tried. I really did. Thank you, T-1. Congratulations. Very nicely done, man. No, no. Stream's not frozen. I'm, I'm taking a look here at the chat. Um, it's kind of hard to, like, look at the chat and be playing at the exact same time that I'm that I'm trying to type or, uh, or, or look at what you guys are writing. Occasionally I can master it, but not with, uh, not with Field of Glory 2. No way. Yeah, I'm going to end the turn there. I think this could be a victory right here. As you can see, they're not making as many moves. Uh, certainly not making any risky moves like they were initially. And they might be trying to form another line with those spearmen. Just going to lead them to their death even faster. Come on, guys. Break the elephant. Break the elephant. You can do it. I told you, a regular foot are going to be their downfall. I mean, they were essentially our downfall initially, so I can't wait for this to happen. Yes, fragmented. The enemy has lost heart. You are victorious. Send that message to Justinian. So, guys, we have one. Um, really, really cool there. I want to see the casualties, though. 
So let's take a look here at the, we can actually review the battlefield and essentially you can look at like all the down men uh, if you'd like to. But what I really want to do is I want to see the casualties list. And it looks like actually the casualties were very, very even, even at, at the end of the battle. Uh, we essentially killed 4,224 total, we wounded 5,280 of the enemy, and we took 6,459 prisoners. But they did a pretty good job against us too. I mean, surely they didn't kill as many of ours as we did of them, but you know, that's still a lot of men, 2,796, and a lot of wounded. Also, I'm, ass I'm assuming wound treatment in ancient times wasn't exactly, uh, you know, an exact science. So those guys probably get, at least half of those get added to the kill list as well. Um, after a week or so. So guys, um, for those of you that have never seen the campaign, now that we've won the battle, it now progresses to the next part of the campaign. Uh, you successfully achieved the victory conditions for the previous stage of the campaign. The Byzantine army lost 9,011 men. The Persian army lost 6,494 men. Take care, Simone. Thank you so much, guys. Or, thank you so much, Simone. Uh, really appreciate it, man. Simone has absolutely brought the stream back to life, guys. I think we can all agree on that. So now we have to detach some units from our garrisons uh, to essentially, you know, go ahead and do one of these um, other options. One of those options is calling in a force from our Arab allies, and the other option is to await reinforcements. These are not likely to be as numerous. If you want to, you can also just go ahead and go back to the previous stage of the campaign. If you don't feel you've done well enough and you want to go ahead and retry that, that's always an option. Uh, now I want to see her. I'm not sure. I didn't see um, an answer here regarding showing you guys anything regarding the epic battles. And I'm, I don't want to proceed with that um, unless Alexius okays it. So he might not be in the stream right now. Thank you, Alexius. Okay, so we're going to show you guys the epic battles. Um, and this is, of course, going to be part of the game. We'll head back here. Now, we're getting out of the campaign. I'm not going to save this campaign. I'm going to go ahead and proceed back. And if we jump into the battle system, now, you guys already know, and for those of you that don't, this is something very important. If you haven't bought Field of Glory 2, you aren't just paying for the battles provided by Alexius you are also getting battles made by users that are incredible. Um, so for instance, if we go up here to download community scenarios, we can look at all of the battles made by new users. And there are a tremendous amount. Um, and these are, of course, vetted by Alexius himself. So there are no bad battles here. These are all very, very well done. I know that Paul and Odinetheus do a lot of these. But you guys can see here, you can do the Gaius Marius campaign, the Scipio Africanus campaign. All sorts of things. Some, I don't even know what they're about. Knos uh, Gephali, I'm not sure. Sounds Greek. Um, so that's that. But we'll show you guys the Belisarius epic battles. So let's go ahead and launch and take a look here at the epic battles provided uh, in Belisarius. Okay, so yeah, I'll, of course I'll take the governor. I'm, I think I'm used to the governor difficulty now. Oh, did I just take the campaign? Sorry, guys. My apologies. So, epic battles. And let's go into Age of Belisarius. Now, of course, Immortal Fire is another DLC that just recently came out, um, as well as Legion's Triumphant. Both really great stuff. And if you look in our history on Twitch, you will eventually find those. Uh, we've streamed those as well to show them off. Okay, guys. So first, we've got the Battle of Dada. The new Byzantine Empire, Justinian I, attempted to negotiate a peace with the Sassanid Persian Empire to end the Iberian War that had started in 526 A.D. The Persian king, Kavad I, refused and sent an army of 40,000 against the Byzantine border fortress of Dada. The senior Byzantine commander in the east, Flavius Belisarius, was encamped with his army outside the fortress. When the Sassanids approached, Belisarius decided to fight a pitched battle outside the walls, as his army was too large to com comfortably occupy the fortress. 
He commanded that a deep ditch be dug across the front with crossing points to allow local counterattacks. And of course, this is a historical victory by the Byzantines. You will always find out here at the bottom, essentially, who won the actual battle. And also a little short historical explanation on the aftermath and its repercussions. We can also play the Byzantines against the Vandals here um, in the Battle of Tricamaram. Uh, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually jump into one of these battles so we can take a look at it. There's also the Scots-Irish against the, uh, and I'm actually not familiar with this battle at all, the Scots-Irish versus the Angles. Uh, in 596, an invading army of Angles landed on the Fife coast near Kilcady. King Aidan Mac Gabrin of the Gaelic Kingdom of Dalrata formed a large army of Scots-Irish Picts and even Britons from Northumbria to oppose the invasion. For seven days, the two armies faced each other in a stalemate. The Angles grouped along the beaches protecting their longboats, and the Allied host prevented them from moving inland. One night after a feast, the king's noble cavalrymen got roaring drunk and at, jar at dawn charged headlong towards the invaders, and the Angles won. Wow. <laughs> Incredible. So I'm actually going to go ahead and jump into um, Bukata, because there's this faction here, which I believe is a new one, the Hephthalite. I'm not familiar with the Hephthalites at all. So let's just go ahead and take a look at the actual battlefield. I'll leave it to you guys to play the actual battle uh, if you are brave enough to attempt it. Uh, but these are the epic battles available, of course, in, in uh, the recent DLC. I'm really liking them. I, I certainly don't know nearly as much about this particular time in history as I do about the time of the Republic um, and the first few emperors, you know, uh, Augustus, Tiberius, uh, Caligula, Claudius, etc. I'm going to go ahead and autofill here. Let's accept. So I just want to take a look at the Hephthalite enemy. And certainly, there is going to be a lot of desert co combat here if we're going to be playing Assassinates. But the Hephthalites almost look like steppe peoples. Uh, a lot of Hunnic... Oh my goodness, Huns? Are they Huns? Now this I didn't know. Um, but it looks like we've got a ton of Hunnic horse archers here in this particular battle. They haven't yet been destroyed. <laughs> They're coming back for more. And of course, we are um, commanding this side commanded by Kosro for the Sassanids. Of course, the Sassanids have their own cataphract units. Uh, there's not just one faction with, with cataphract units. There are actually a few. And in this case, uh, excuse me, the Persians have their own cataphract units, but they also have Sassanid units within them. Um, I guess at this point, the Sassanids could also be hired as mercenaries, uh, things of this nature. And I would assume that the Sassanid armored horse archers are just as good um, as their actual Persian counterparts here. Let's move forward. That being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed the stream. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Alexius, for stopping by. I'm sure if any of you guys have questions, Alexius would be happy to answer them uh, regarding the actual game itself. If I'm not mistaken, this is the third DLC to come out for Field of Glory 2, and they just keep getting better. And Alexius, I do hope, I do hope that you keep on um, getting closer and closer to present day. Um, I would love, and I, I don't know if it's even possible, but I would love to see you know something in the 1500s. Uh, it'd be wonderful. Ah, Sassanid Persians. Thank you, Alexis. So that makes sense. So these are Sassanid Persians. But I would love to see uh, some, you know, some maybe touches, maybe touching on Pike and Shot eventually. I, I, I don't think that's possible. Uh, nonetheless, absolutely awesome. Uh, thank you guys so much for stopping by. And again, we really do have to thank um, specifically uh, Simone for, for bringing, basically bringing this channel back. Uh, because now we're actually able to do the raffles again. We're able to get the coupons. And I can tell just by looking at you guys that you're a lot happier. So that makes me happy too. Thank you again, guys. Um, if you ever want to find me, Agrippa Maxenius, you can find me on Twitch as well as on YouTube. I do a tremendous amount of strategy games as well as a lot of Field of Glory 2, uh, amongst other games made by Slytherin and Matrix um, and some other strategy games. Uh, but mostly I do focus on Slytherin and Matrix games. I just happen to really enjoy them. What can I say? Thank you, Byron. And yes, many thanks to Simone. Thank you, Van. No worries, Trop. I hope you all have an awesome, awesome day. And I am going to go head out uh, to get some late lunch, as they say. Take care, my friends.